these teachers are travelling to Antarctica. They've flown from Britain 12,000 miles away. They've come to stay in Antarctica for a month to do science experiments and find out more about what it's like to live in sub-zero conditions. It's just pretty amazing. I mean, it's really calm. I think we're very lucky to you know, come in in such sort of calm weather. Really clear skies. This program is going to follow the teacher's journey to look at what Antarctica is like and find out what it takes for people to live in such a cold place. To get there, the teachers travel 12,000 miles over Spain, the Atlantic Ocean and then South America. Once they've landed in Antarctica, they then get another smaller plane into the mountains. The aeroplane has skis, so it can land on the snow. Uh, when you're in Antarctica, you can't really um, use cars in the same way because it's all snow and ice. Uh, so probably the most common way of getting around is using an aeroplane because it's such a, a large, a huge place and it's so much easier to move in the sky than it is on the ground. They are then left to camp on the ice, where they are going to wait and see what effect living in the cold has on their body. It's also very cold. It can get as cold as minus 80 degrees centigrade. In Britain, it only rarely gets any colder than minus 10. But certainly, I can start to feel my scraggly beard beginning to freeze up a bit. Nose is constantly running. Ugh. It's so cold that the sea freezes too. Sometimes this ice breaks off the main ice pack, making an iceberg. However, Antarctica does have seasons just like in Britain. In the summer, the days last for 24 hours. The sun never sets and there is no night time. It's hard to tell what time of day it is really. It doesn't change very much. My impression is that this probably is relatively early morning because the sun just does a circuit all the way around you during the day. Even though it's so cold, some animals can still live there. Penguins live in Antarctica and carry a thick layer of blubber to keep themselves warm in the cold weather. Anything that lives in Antarctica must be extremely tough. Our teachers are searching for little plant-like organisms called lichens, which live on rocks. They are one of the few things to live inland in Antarctica. It's too cold for flowers or plants, like you find in warmer climates. Lichens are quite special because they look a little bit like plants, they look a little bit like moss on the rocks, but they're not plants at all. What they are is a fungi, which is like the mushrooms that you eat, they're fungi, um, and an algae, which is a very small, tiny plant, and they live together. Because they're living together, they, they enable each other to survive, so the fungi holds onto the rock and keeps it in place and also takes nutrients from, from outside, and the algae is able to turn the sunlight into food. So here we've got... Um some of this foliose, the red lichen, the rusty red one, and also a small amounts of the other types of lichen that we've got there. So there's two different species on that rock. Um, hopefully when we get back to the UK, we can get someone to have a proper look at it and just make sure they identify exactly what it is and just find out whether it's, it's anything new. It's not just lichens and penguins that find it hard to survive in Antarctica. It's very difficult for people too. This is a base camp called Patriot Hills. It's one of the few places where people live and work in Antarctica. It's not there all year round. It's only there in the summertime in Antarctica. So they're all tents, there's no buildings at all and they're all very bright colors. So you've got people that cook the meals and people that fly the planes, so the pilots, and they're all working together on the campsite. Everything arrives by aeroplane, which comes once a week. It doesn't land on a tarmac runway like we're used to. It lands on flat ice, which means it takes much longer to stop. 
Tents, food and everything that is needed to make a camp is offloaded. Putting up a tent isn't easy in the wind. People use ice stakes because normal tent pegs wouldn't stay in the ice. Because it's so icy, normal cars can't be used to get around. People use motorized bikes with skis on the bottom, called skidoos. Another way of getting around is to ski. The teachers are learning to ski so they can get around quicker. Skiing's a useful way to get around when you're in Antarctica. When you're on the snow, um, sometimes if you're just wearing shoes, you sink down into the snow and it's very difficult to take steps. But if you're on skis, you spread your weight out over a much bigger, wider area. So it means it's much easier to stay on top of the snow. It's really relaxing once you get into a rhythm of kind of push and slide for a little bit. I love it. Everything is permanent. There are no power stations in Antarctica. However, there is a lot of sun and people use solar panels to generate electricity to power their equipment. Because there are no shops, people bring all their own food. One of our teachers is eating freeze-dried food and so you just have to add hot water. We've just added water to the chicken korma and we've left it for five minutes and this is the end result. So let's have a taste. Let's take the hair out of it. Try not to spill it. Pretty good. It's really important to eat a lot when you're in Antarctica. It's hard because you have to keep eating as well when you don't really feel like it. And the reason is because it's so cold, you use so much energy just to try and keep warm that you need to take in food to give you that energy. One of the perks is that everyone has to eat lots of sugary snacks like chocolate and sweets all through the day because they contain lots of energy. Haribo, dairy milk, another dairy milk, Mars bar, a bigger bucket of Haribo, and the hot chocolate. But you still have to remember to clean your teeth if you can. Yeah, I'm trying to clean my teeth and my toothpaste is solid. So I'm having a bit of bother. <laughs> One of the main difficulties in Antarctica is keeping warm. The teachers do this by wearing clothes specially designed to be worn in the cold. You've got to protect your extremities, so that's one of the uh, things. So there's a neck gaiter here, a fleece and hat. Um, keep your head comfortable. I'm wearing the glacier glasses at the moment. Boots at the bottom to protect my feet are called mucklucks. Uh, they've got an enormous sort of um, fibre, wool and reflective material liner that goes right inside the boot. And I've also got a pair of thick socks on. Gloves, there'll be an inner glove and then another glove over the top. And indeed when it's really cold, um, I'll be wearing mittens over the top of that as well. Antarctica is not only the coldest place on Earth, it's also the windiest. But I just want to try and give you an idea of what it's like living in winds that have been gusting above 50 miles an hour. The whole tent shakes. Uh, these are double poled, these tents, to try and make them strong against, against the gales that are blowing around us. But even still, try sleeping in this. But the wind can be fun. Because Antarctica is so cold and isolated, it makes it a very good place to do science experiments because it has been so little polluted or changed by human activities. By measuring the melting of the ice, scientists can tell the effects of global warming. But that's not the only science done in Antarctica. Before they left home, our teachers did tests so they could find out how fit they were and then measure the effect the cold has on their bodies. 
They're also going to find out how the cold affects their mood, whether they're happy or sad. Back in Antarctica, the experiment is underway and the teachers record how they feel every day. They also record the weather data so they can compare how cold it is to how they feel. This is a, a mood state questionnaire and it goes through things like, did I enjoy today's meals? Um, how depressed or happy am I? How lonely am I? How alert? How physically feeling 100% etc. Back in Britain, their expedition leader is keeping a track of how they are. He phones the teachers once a day to collect their data. In Antarctica, they have to use a special satellite phone. But we've got quite good visibility. You can see right up to the hills. This isn't like any mobile phone. It uses satellites in space to bounce the signal around the world. All right, then. Cheers, Chris. Bye. After one week, the teachers are stuck in a storm. The weather is so cold and windy, they can't even go out of the tent. Pretty much throughout the night and all day today, we've had winds that have been gusting up to about 30 knots. It's meant lots of digging out of the tent, and it's meant an awful lot of noise and rattling of the tent through the night and through the day. The bad weather seems to make the teachers feel depressed. Can't have a wash. Everything smells. So it's just a bit. All this data will be useful for scientists to look at back in Britain. After one month in Antarctica, it's time for the teachers to fly home. It's nice to see their friends and families, but their experiment hasn't finished yet. As soon as they arrive back in the UK, they do the physical tests again to see how much their bodies have changed during their trip to the cold. Before we went, we completed a whole battery of tests, so fitness, shivering, sweating points, cold sensitivity, um, and now we're repeating those tests to see if there's been any change. Some people's thermal sensitivity has changed, and that means their ability to feel changes in cold or changes in heat. So my fingers are less sensitive than they were, whereas someone like Ruth is much more sensitive than she was. They've found that there's been a, an increase in weight, and that, that weight's been put on in fat around the stomach, which uh, looks like the body just trying to beef itself up a bit against the cold. The teachers back home with their families will never forget their time in Antarctica. But because of the effects of global warming, we don't know how long this icy continent will stay in this pristine condition for other people to enjoy. Mm -hmm.